What's up YouTube family? Now this is a last minute video. I had something else planned, but I just got off a crazy phone call and they gave me some really uh, gut-wrenching information of what's going on in the automotive industry and I wanted to go ahead and bring it to you ASAP. So I apologize if this video is not as polished as the rest of mine. I wanted to bring you this information very, very quickly because as you guys know, if you've seen the stock market, Things are changing extremely rapidly. And like I said, the phone call I just got off of was extremely bad. So I know we're supposed to start off 2022 with some positive information. So this information, unfortunately, is gonna be bad for about 95% of you. Now, 5% of you are actually gonna probably benefit from this, which we're gonna go into. But you know, I don't have any time to make any fancy graphs or slides, so I'm just gonna go old school. We're gonna bring out the whiteboard and we're gonna talk about the phone call I got off of, how it's gonna affect you, and it's how it's gonna affect the automotive industry. I apologize about the lighting. This is definitely last minute. But before I get into this, I just want to say that I am not a numbers wizard. I don't know how to make all those crazy graphs and stuff like that. I just understand uh, numbers when it comes to this way. So I'm going to give you guys kind of a simple breakdown. Also, I want to make a disclaimer. A lot of people right now, especially in this industry, are doing a lot of knee-jerk reactions. And the reason why they're doing these reactions is because it's all based off of analytics. There's a lot of people that put too much merit and too much belief into these analytics. Now, analytics sometimes can forecast what they think they're gonna do, they, th they see trends, all this other stuff, but it's not ever super indicative of what's going on in the current market. Now, what I'm gonna show you today is literally, it's, it's a bunch of people in a cubicle that probably read some analytics, freaked out, and had a knee-jerk reaction, and this is why I'm bringing you this video, because it is a big, big deal. Now, as you guys know, the government lends money to everybody, different countries, different people. So if you are in the subprime market, this is where I'd say about 60% of Americans hang out. This is people with like a 620 credit score and below. Now, the government issues money to like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and Chase. They get it at a very low interest rate, and they're able to lend it out to small subprime lenders at a, let's say, a little bit more of a bigger rate. So they can make their cut, which they could pay the government cut. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring you this video today is, as you guys know, the stock market's been going up and down, and it's had four or five days in a row where it's actually going down, it's trending down. Stocks are down, Bitcoin's down, Ethereum's down, everybody's losing their minds. So what is the first thing people do? They start running risk factors on the paper they have, which I'm gonna explain here with LTV and repos here in a minute. But what's happened is, is they're going through their analytics and they freaked out. They're like, oh my God, we're not gonna be able to recoup our money or make a big enough profit if we keep lending the way we're lending. So what does that mean? Let's say all these small little subprime independent banks are used to getting, let's say, $25 million a quarter to lend. As of right now, what they see trending is repo rates going way up due to the fact that the money is gone. Like we make jokes all the time about the stimulus ballers. That is not a joke. The money is gone. People thinking that, oh, the money's never gonna run out, the economy's doing good, it is absolutely not. So what's happening is the repo rate is already starting to trickle up. All the forbearance programs are going down and everything bad is happening. Now, we're gonna go over LTV and repo here in a second, but I just wanted you to understand this. So what's happening now is once they did the analytics, these particular banks get back from the government, well, hey, look, we're gonna charge you more rates because we're gonna to have to raise the, the federal interest rate and with the new rate hike comes new qualifications for buyers, which trickles down to these banks, which they raise the rates once again to the subprime banks. Now the subprime banks, they have nowhere else to go. They're lending to the general public. So they're gonna to have to increase the qualifications for this type of lending. Now, when I say increase, it doesn't only mean increasing the qualifications, it also means decreasing the amount of money they're able to lend and how much money they're able to lend to. So let's say they were promised $25 million a quarter. I talked to some banks, they were offered $10 million a quarter. Now in your brain, you're thinking, well, that's still a lot of money. For a major subprime bank, that isn't nothing. I know buy here, pay here dealers, they got $10 million in portfolio. And so that's what scares me. If they're doing this across the board, 
just as of today as a knee-jerk reaction. I've been on the phone since like 8 a.m. this morning and it's just non-stop bad news. Now, this is currently what's going on in this market. Now, normally this market goes up and down and you know they play with the government's money and we're okay with that. Now, there's a little dot or circle up here with the question mark. You know, this is private investor money or hedge funds, however you want to call it. Private money, hedge fund, whatever. Now, usually what happens is the Fed always gets scared, pulls the purse strings, stops the flow of money, stops lending, which trickles all the way down. Private money and hedge funds, that's usually where it picks up because they usually step in when the government's not. Now, as of right now, a lot of the companies, there's two major companies that they lend to, which lend to smaller individual banks or individual dealers, if you want to say, as far as buying portfolio, which is auto loans, stuff like that. As of right now, I talked to one of the reps in one of these major companies, and they told me flat out not to buy any paper over a million dollars, which portfolio over a million dollars is quite a bit. That's what like large buy here, pay here companies sell every three to six months. We usually bundle that together and sell it off and then recoup our money. So they're told not to buy that paper from these dealers to hold off and wait. So what's gonna happen is, is all the dealers that are used to selling their paper every 60 to 90 days are gonna be stuck with their paper. What that means is they don't have the liquidity to buy new cars to keep that snowball moving. So this is why it really scared me because usually the bank, they always pull the purse strings every few months, they get scared, they get nervous, but usually private money, especially where there's not many places where you can make a large solid uh, return of investment, they usually kind of, they start trickling out into the automotive industry because they like subprime automotive loans because it's 15 to 29%. But if these guys are not willing to take a risk and they're pulling back because their analytics say that it's gonna be 2008 all over again, that's what scares me. They all start using these key terms. Over LTV, which is loan to value, which I'm gonna explain here in a second, and the repo rate is going way, way, way up. And that's what scares me. So now that we got this out of the way, we're gonna talk about LTV and uh, repo. So LTV rate is basically your loan to value. Most people, when they go out and buy a car, they put a sizable down payment down, you know, but during this uh, particular time, they're averaging about 122% of LTV. Now, 122% is basically over retail. Now, the reason they justified that was because of the market and because of the build down and because of everything else. Now, when these numbers come out, it's like people freaked out a little bit about it, but they, they figured it's because of um, inflation. So that's why they didn't really care until this week. Now, when you go to repo rate, even if inflation goes up, your repo rate should stay down. Most, I'd say, subprime lenders experience repos between six and like eight and a half percent. Okay, that's for people that are just really bad subprime customers, have multiple repos, usually with you know millions of dollars of portfolio, this is what they average as far as a repo rate. Now, unfortunately, I'm gonna go over here to 2008. This particular loan to value ratio, which I'm gonna put right here, was at 88%. So in 2008 was the worst time we've ever had when it came to this. Now, we talked about current 122%. Back then, it was uh, LTV was at 88%. Now, we're gonna go back to repo. This is what it's expected to be. As of numbers from last week, they're anticipating it jumping up to 11.2%. Now, in your mind, you're thinking, well, that's not that much, that's not that bad, but it is extremely bad, and I'm gonna tell you why. Back in 2008, after the collapse, people started giving out their cars, giving away. Every bank had a repo rate of, I think it was a little under 14%. Every time this ticks up, they have a major change of actual lending money. They don't wanna lend as much. Now, all they do is keep offsetting their risk. How do they offset risk? They turn off the faucet, they stop giving out money. If they stop giving out money, dealers don't sell more cars, brings the volume of the cars they're bringing down, which also brings down the prices, which causes this ugly spiral of the loan to value. 
as of right now, as the auction starts to fill up full of cars, which we've talked about this for a long time, nobody believes me, everybody thinks price heists are just going up. That 122% LTV, they're not gonna get that at the auction. They're probably gonna get closer to, to 60, to maybe 75% if the car is clean. So now these banks are losing this big chunk of money on cars that they expected to get. Now during, this, uh, during the pandemic, there was a lot of banks that were giving people that couldn't afford these cars loans. You know, you had these stimulus ballers that were making four grand a month that normally make $2,000 a month and they're buying brand new Dodge Chargers with a $1,000 monthly payment. That does not work. But they had the money, they had the five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars down because of all the free money the government was pumping out there. So the banks went go ahead and approved everybody. Here we are sitting a year later and all those loans they gave out in 2020 and 2021 are starting to bite them in the ass. We haven't even gotten to the first quarter numbers yet. Usually we don't see this bad stuff happen till March, till after tax season. So what's happening now, and the reason why I wanna bring this to you is because they're pulling the purse strings today. Not next week, not after tax season, now. And what that means, if you're a used car dealer, they're not gonna be giving you as much money to lend to your customers. The restrictions are gonna be even higher. So if you normally, these subprime banks ask for maybe two to $3,000 down on a $10,000 car, they may bump this up to three to $4,000. Now in your guys' heads, you're thinking, oh, well that's not that bad, the customer just needs to come up with $1,000 more. And every dealer will tell you the same thing, good luck. We have a hard enough time trying to get $1,000 from a customer. These guys, that's pretty much all the money they have. So now, taxes are not gonna be as good as this year because we talked about it. A lot of people did not check that little box to take the taxes out of their unemployment. So now we have the banks not giving you any money, coupled with uh, a very, very bad uh, tax season, which we know it's gonna last about a week, and all these people that think they're getting five, 10, $15,000 are gonna get like two grand, three grand, or they're actually gonna owe money because they've gotten so much unemployment for the government for the last two years that they're gonna actually owe that back. And this is literally the worst thing that I think can possibly happen. That's why I'm making this video because with these numbers, the bank fees, which we talk about all the time, banks actually charge us to sell a deal. Those are gonna go up. The money that they're gonna lend is gonna go down. Customer down payments are gonna go way down because they don't have the money. You know, and then on top of that, they're gonna be extremely picky when it comes to actually lending the money. Now, we've seen the numbers from 2008, like I said, 88% of LTV and 14% of LTV. As these cars start going the repo, like I said, they're gonna get 60 to 75%, which is basically gonna lead to this awful snowball effect of cars getting cheaper. Now, it's not the bubble we wanted to pop where cars come more affordability. Even if cars do get cheaper, with this, what I'm seeing right now in the market, it's gonna get even harder to get a bank loan. So unless you have stellar credit, which some of you guys out there do, this is gonna be a good thing for you. But for dealers, a lot of our people are subprime customers. You know, and like I said, 650 is not a bad credit score, but most banks consider that subprime. So now they're gonna have higher STIPS requirements. Maybe they're gonna require instead of three months on the job, six months on the job. Instead of, you know, like 10%, they're gonna want 15 or 20 or 25% down. So all this is gonna throw the business way out of whack. Now, we kind of talked about this, and then like I said, it is very, very scary. But there are, this is about 95% of dealers are gonna be affected by this. Not only dealers, but consumers. There is 5% of people that are gonna make out like a bandit from unfortunately this downfall. First one is customers or consumers with extremely good credit and relationships with strong banks. You'll be able hopefully here soon to get any car you want at around the same price, you know, hopefully a little bit below retail pricing here very shortly because the banks just can't recoup the money from the losses and they're gonna start going into sell mode which forces the dealerships into lowering their price and getting rid of them. So that's the first group that's gonna get affected by this and they're gonna benefit from it. The next one are dealers that are buy here, pay here. We always talk about like, you know, um, perfect example. They always say there's more millionaires made in a recession than any other time in history. The same thing goes with car business. I have friends that are real estate investors that save millions of dollars 
just waiting for the economy to tank so they can buy houses and then sit on them for you know four or five years and then sell them down the road. And that's all they do. Every 10 years, they buy millions of dollars of property and flip it. I know dealers that do the exact same thing when it comes to buy here, pay here portfolio. The people that have the liquid capital to weigh out this storm, which I'm guessing is probably gonna be about 18 months, they wanna see the economy if it recovers and how fast it is. You know, people that are structuring buy here, pay here, they can afford to keep it, not sell it. Because remember I told you, a lot of these private investor money, they're not buying portfolio anymore. So if you're trying to sell your buy here, pay here, good luck because they're not gonna give it to you or they're gonna give you pennies on the dollar, maybe 50% of what you're normally gonna get because they wanna offset their risk because they're, ex they're basically assuming that everybody's making less money, people are off unemployment, and there's no jobs. All we hear is bad, 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 economy going down, no jobs. These are very scary things. So if you are a buy here, pay here dealer, get ready for a very bumpy ride, but you guys are gonna be the rock stars here in the next coming months because when all these banks stop lending, People still need to buy cars and they still need modes of transportation. It may take two, three months for these idiots to realize that they can't buy the charger of their dreams or the Mercedes they want. So more than likely, they're gonna have to go to these buy here, pay here dealers to get that Chevy Malibu or that Kia Rio that you guys have for sale on your lot for 20% you know, interest. I know it sucks, people are not happy about it, but those are the, the dealers that are gonna make out like a bandit during these times because they're gonna have no other option. Now, this is, like I said, extremely scary. I know you guys probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but when I was doing this back in 08, when this first happened, it was scary. I remember people walking in with a pulse. Hey, I need to buy a car. Uh, here's a $20,000 car. You want a warranty? Here you go, out of the way. In 2010, 11, oh, we want 12 references. We want six months of bank statements that have to match the pay stubs. They have to have 25% down. Everything's gonna be GPS'd, and even if they're good people, 25% interest for everybody, we don't care. And that's the way the business was. And even that too, they still, we, we would have deals that we'd be like backlogged, and the banks would only, oh, sorry, we can't lend out till next month. So tell that customer to come back in two weeks because we're tapped out. Because their big banks, like Chase and everything else, would only give these small banks X amount of money to spend every quarter. And we've personally known banks that ran out of money during this time. So after I got off that phone call, we got big banks cutting off little banks and adding more, like I said, more rates and more stipulations on actually getting approved for your auto loan, which all spells pretty much doom and disaster. So, um, you know, I apologize. I know this seems kind of crazy and wacky and look like some crazy conspiracy theory if you don't know what I'm talking about, but this is literally what happens in the car business. And this cycle repeats every five to 10 years, which is pretty scary. But what I'm telling you guys right now, if you can afford to do buy here, pay here, get ready for it. If you have an overpriced car and you're into it over 120% of LTV, sell it. Drive a piece of shit for a month or two, I guarantee you that price is gonna go down because as of right now, you know, even at Mannheim, I think we, we did the first video, they had 200 cars, then they have 1,500 cars. Now they're sitting on 2,800 cars that are gonna be sold just here in Vegas this week. So that just lets you know how many cars are coming back into the market. Even though there's a chip shortage and dealers say they don't have anything, drive down some of your streets, the cars are filling up and this is gonna expedite it even faster. So anyways, if you guys have any questions, please put in the comment section below. I'll release Monday's video to uh, Wednesday, but I wanted to bring this to you ASAP because this is very important. If you are a dealer and you have a maxed out floor plan, sell your shit now. Don't get stuck in it, don't get buried in it, get rid of it. You can always buy a few cars down the road. You know, if you're in a few cars pretty good, you're not really high over retail, then you could sit on them. But everything else that's super expensive, that's over 20K, and you don't have really good banks, get the hell out of it because you're gonna be stuck with these cars when these banks don't do any lending and they don't have the down payments for the cars. Because I know me and about 70 other dealers, um, in Vegas and probably thousands of them all across the United States, we're all waiting for tax season because this is our gravy train and it is gone, my friends. So take heed, sell your shit, be very, very careful, talk to your local bankers. Say, hey, look, I just watched a video on YouTube and this guy's talking about how banks are cutting off money. Or money. Is it true? Are you guys getting less funding this quarter than you normally do? And some of them will lie to you, be like, no, we're still buying, we're always buying. 
Bullshit. Ask them to come over and start buying deals. When they start, like deals you normally see get approved, they stop approving them. You know that, like I said, they went from 25 million down to $10 million per quarter and that money trickles down even further the smaller the bank goes. So anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I pray to God, I hope that this doesn't turn into a very bad self-reciprocating like negative snowball, but hopefully this knee jerk reaction will wear off in a little bit. This is all caused by idiots that literally live and die by analytics. Not saying that's good, not saying it's wrong. It's just that knee-jerk reactions are never good in any type of market. So even if you're investing in the stock market and you see the market dropping, don't pull all your money out and try to time the market, just like the car business. If shit doesn't look that bright on the other side and you see the repo rate going up, don't go crazy and pull off all the money. Just wait, especially the gov, they're giving out so much free money, it's ridiculous. I don't even know why these major banks are putting more restrictions on these subprime banks. Anyways, you guys be safe out there and we'll see you next video.